Click the link in the description for your free Amsoil catalog. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to some of our friends. The Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Search for them on Facebook. Central Minnesota Pond Racing. Search for them on Facebook. The historic Lancaster Motel for the ultimate Eastern trail riding adventure. Crane's Snowmobile Museum at 172 Main Street in Lancaster, New Hampshire. The Vintage Snowmobile Club of America Quarterly Magazine. The New Hampshire Snowmobile Museum at Bear Brook State Park in Allenstown, New Hampshire. If you decide to advertise with the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast, this could be your advertising message. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here. I have a robust lineup. Let me find the graphic. I have a robust lineup of Vintage Snowmobile Entertainment on tap for you tonight. In fact, we have an embarrassment of riches. Everything we're going to look at tonight... Uh, will be images and video clips sent by viewers. This is what I've been wanting all along with this podcast is for a way for all of us to be sharing uh, images, video clips, information that we can all enjoy together as a community. And it's all coming together. And I'm so very, very happy about that. Now, before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a message. Uh, please let us know where you're viewing this from and whether you are a first-time viewer or a regular viewer. Now, to our first-time viewers, we thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with us tonight. Hope you have a good time, and I hope you decide to, to circle back here in one week's time uh, to do it again at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday evening. Now, this podcast, <coughs> pardon me, this podcast simulcast to eight different places across Facebook and YouTube. So wherever you wherever you're viewing this, just circle back here in one week's time, and we'll be waiting for you. To our regular viewers who are here week after week, season after season, you guys are the ones who make this possible, and we very, very much appreciate that. We've got a lot of comments coming in. Let's take a look here. We've got uh, Jeff from Snow Tracks is in the house. Nice to see you, Jeff. Hope you're doing well. Uh, David from Alaska Railroad says, good evening, Mike, and friends of the podcast. Sounds great. Absolutely. In fact, we've, we're going to be taking a look at some images and footage from David a little later in the podcast. Also, our good friend Armin Buto from Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, says there's a vintage ride to tomorrow, Granite State Power, at 9 a.m. Outstanding. Thank you for that information. David Lowry says, coming through loud and clear. Hello from Alberta, Canada. 
And then we've got Reese Fleury. Good evening. Regular viewer from Tupper Lake, New York. Now we've got some more comments coming in, but I want to bring our guests on first and we'll continue to take them as we go. Uh, but let me uh, switch screens here, turn on microphones. Gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? Hello, Mike. How's your weather down there? Uh, it's been a little interesting. It was very, real warm this week, but we got some snow earlier in the week. Uh, yeah. How about out your way? Oh, we're going to be hitting 50 tomorrow, rain for 24 hours straight. This Great. is my good buddy, Butch Lewis. He's my right-hand man doing all the shows, and we're in Toronto right now doing the Sportsman Show for four days. Wonderful. Nice to meet you, Butch. I appreciate you coming on. Thanks. Cool deal. Cool deal. Well, now that we've got you on, let's take a few more comments, and then we're going to look at some videos. Uh, we've got Kevin Colhane saying loud and clear from the shed in V-Town, Ontario. He's a regular viewer. Uh, Stacy and Art Fosler, regular viewers, says sounds good for Myrtle Beach, Carolina, South Carolina. They're regular viewers as well. I believe they're at a car show down there last week on the Muscle Car Podcast. They mentioned they'd be going down there, and it sounds like that's that's where they are. Uh, Brett Esseltine says loud and clear in Bridgeport, New York. Spencer Delubrier says sounds great, Mike. Uh, and Spencer's footage will be on here tonight as well. Uh, we've got someone on here from Wisconsin possibly either James or John Spranger. Uh, might be James because we've got John Spranger right here. John Spranger Jr., a good friend of mine, says, sounds good. Uh, Keith Jash says, I'm Keith from Harwinton, Connecticut. Uh, just a few more here, and then we'll get to the videos. Peter Chappell says, hi, Mike, not many miles this, this year. He's in Cuyahoga, New York. Yeah, a lot of us got skunked on the snow this winter, uh, with a possible exception of the last week or so. Uh, then we got someone else coming in uh, loud and clear from Sudbury, Ontario. I presume, regular viewer. No, Red they have Harbin. a lot of snow. They did, huh? Oh, they have uh, a lot of snow up there. Sure. Brent Corbin, regular viewer from, from Owasso, Michigan. Someone else on Facebook saying good evening. And David from Alaska Railroad saying good evening to Bob to Rob and Butch. Cool deal. All right. So let's get the menu up here. We're going to take a look at a video clip. This was sent by one of our viewers, uh, Fritz Rupp. Uh, Fritz Rupp, of course, is his nickname, uh, but he's got some images he shared with us uh, that he took at a, a, a vintage snowmobile show recently of Ron Hawkins, who's a former Rupp racer. Let me cue up that footage, and we'll take a look here. Thank you so much to Fritz for those cool images. Now, either of you gentlemen, uh, Rob or Butch, familiar with uh, Ron Hawkins as a racer? No, not at all. Yeah, I've not heard of him either. But uh, that, I mean, I've, there's a lot of people I'm not familiar with. But uh, if anyone viewing this has any information about uh, the career, the racing career of Ron Hawkins, we'd love to hear it uh, in the comment section. Well, that was probably back in 72 to 76, that route. Yes. Yeah, it looks like it, especially you know, with those images and the vintage of those sleds, for sure. Yeah. 
and we've got a comment coming in. Oh, here we go. Josh Leverker is in the house saying hello. Cool deal. Now, Josh was going to be on here live with us tonight, but something came up. He wasn't able to do it, but I'm glad he was able to, to come on in the uh, as a viewer and, and join us. So very cool. Very cool. So now we are on item number two, which I've, if I were in the right place, uh, is, uh, is some announcements. And this is a chance for Rob to talk to us about AMSOIL. I'm going to put you full screen. Uh, Rob and Butch, uh, and yeah, please well, talk to I us about I always AMSOIL. talk about AMSOIL every week. So now I'm going to let Butch do it because I always like to put him on the spot. <laughs> and Butch likes to, he does a lot of testing on different things like that. And he had a really good article about the antifreeze in the car. So I'm going to talk, let him talk about the antifreeze we use for the snowmobiles. Go ahead, yes. Butch. So we have, uh, our antifreeze isn't quite the same as everybody else's. It's, uh, it's a test that you use a test strip because the, uh, the bulb system won't work on it. Um, you can buy it in the U.S. You can buy it pre-mixed or um, as, a, as a mixing product up here. And you can buy the smaller bottles for sports shoes, and they are pre-mixed. Now, it's um, in the car we did. The uh, It was a big block, 429 and a 59 Ford uh, wagon. And uh, the guy was having issues. The rad was right. Everything seemed to be right, but he was still running hot. And we changed his, we flushed out his oil system and his uh, coolant system. And then we switched them to uh, his partic particular application was Z-Rod 1030. And we switched them to our coolant and dropped, uh, with our testing, dropped it 30 degrees at the rad, 30 degrees at the thermostat housing where we check from. And we always check the block and his gauge to see what it says. So we had a 30 degree drop just by changing the coolant and the oil. Now, um, we also have a coolant boost that goes with this, but this one, the bottle I'm holding here, if you can see it is uh, for most sports application, you'd buy this one for your sled and uh, dirt bikes, dirt bikes, anything that's uh, any of your toys. With it, you can also run the coolant boost. Now the coolant boost, you just don't pour in this whole thing. There is a recipe. If, you, uh, if you're racing on a track that doesn't allow you to run coolant, you can run water with this. Now, you would run two ounces to a quart uh, if it's just straight water. But if you're running uh, in an area where you can actually and still use coolant, like if you're grass racing, I guess, on a sled, but uh, in the winter when you're using the actual coolant for the uh, lubricating the, the uh, water pump and everything, this is only one ounce to a quart. You have to, uh, you know, more isn't better. You got to follow the recipe. Sure. Yeah. A lot of people think we just have lubricants, but we have a lot of automotive product. Now, Butch sent me a picture a couple of weeks ago about him and his wife. And the picture was taken how many years ago? 48, 49. 49 years ago. He still has the same wife and he still has the same car that was in the picture. But wow. now he's restoring the car. So we have a product called MP. Metal protector. How did it work, Butch? Well, it's a spray on aerosol. Most people think it's just as a, a WD-40 type. But yeah, it's a WD-40 type, but there is no acids or bleach in it. So you can actually reassemble with it and not worry about deterioration or the the, the bolts welding to the, the nut. Now, I sprayed it on the 34 Ford in some spots that the hardware had never been removed. So there are 89 years they were in those bolt holes. And I went back the next day, give it 24 hours, I went back the next day and I used a, a small quarter drive Makita hand impact and uh, it took them, walked them right out and they're reusable. They're still in good shape and I'll be able to lube them and put them back together. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. 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 And it's a, a, a product that has 101 purposes. I use it on the sliders and the snow will stop it from wearing out. Some people use it for their clutches to keep it lubricant. And uh, I got one person that sprays it on their wooden windows to make them slide up and down more because of the swelling from the weather. And some of the military right. and the cops use it for gun oil. Yes, for lubricant. Yes, yeah. In fact, I've got a graphic here that will pop up, uh, pop up on the screen. It's the second yes. one from the right. Yep, the MP. Yep. And then there's and also the a heavy-duty right, MP. Heavy-duty MP. That's the one I told you about I spray on the shovels for, for the snow doesn't stick when it gets wet and slushy like it's going to happen yes. tomorrow on us. And in the yeah, shoot of a snowboard, could also be used as an undercoating. Yeah, for a car or something. Yeah, yeah so a lot of uses for that. Yeah. Do you have the sure. clip for the Amsoil special this week? 
I do not. I am sorry to say. Oh, I was... well, the special that they, they have this week that anybody who buys two jugs of the diesel, 15, any kind of diesel oil Amsoil cells, you buy two one gallon jugs, they're going to throw in the oil filter for you free. So, anybody Beautiful. that's a preferred customer that wants to buy, this is the time to buy if you want to get a free product. If you only buy $75 worth, they're going to give you the magnet stick. Magnet, oh, okay, magnetic wand. Magnetic wand. Yeah. For those lost 10 mils. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, wonderful. If you want to know how to become preferred, Mike has it right on his page how you can sign up, get the best possible discount. Yeah, for sure. In fact, click that first. Click the preferred customer uh, box first. That way, anything else you order will come in at the deepest discount. I had a guy a few weeks ago ordered. He saved $54 on that first order just by clicking that preferred customer box first. Uh, it's pay worth $10. $10. Yeah, it's a $10 one-time fee, but that $10 saved him $54. So that more, to, more than paid for itself just on that first order. Uh, and it's it will continue to do so. $10 for six months. Yes, it'll continue to pay for itself for the next six months. Yes. Exactly. Well, cool. We've got a comment that's come in. Let's take a look here. We've got um, uh, David from Alaska Road said, I can't talk. Alaska Railroad says, Butch, is that coolant booster rod bearing safe in our pulling truck engines? Uh, engines below a head gasket. Uh, I know a regulator coolant will wash out oil in the case of the head gasket failure. Uh, and he's thinking of the other antifreeze, yeah. Blow an engine, it takes yeah. the bearing up, and yeah. it doesn't, right? Okay, yes, yes. I, I have a 340 SRX snowmobile that the heads were playing a little too much. So once you redlined it, it sucked that rubber gasket in the cylinder. And when you're running regular antifreeze before, you took the bearings head. When I switched to Amsoil antifreeze, it did not destroy the bearings one bit. So it's perfect for a truck pulling. Wonderful, wonderful. Don't send we... me an email. We have special diesel oil for performance pullers. Yes, yeah, please do that. Yeah, also, and then if so... you're using it in a, a normal uh, gas or diesel engine, it uh, on the street, it has a seven-year lifespan. Seven years, amazing. And now we've got someone else saying, uh, will the coolant booster, is that good to use in a snowmobile radiator? Uh, on his 2013 Polaris, it always seems to run a little warmer than he'd like. I... I... The reason I like it in my snowmobile is the warm-up time is half half as long. So when you go out and it's 30 below, you, when I used to smoke, it was a joke. You had to have two cigarettes to let your snowmobile warm up before you could move it. Because you got to let the rat oil, the heat go through the engine, through the rad, through the heat exchanger. If you didn't do that, you would cold seize them. The coolant boost would make it warm up faster, but it also dropped the temperature of the engine by 10 to 20 degrees. So it will run cooler. Amazing. So, yeah, it's definitely very good for using in a snowmobile. And if you're curious Perfect. about any of this, there's links in the descriptions. Uh, also, uh, David from Alaska Railroad apologizes for the messed up spelling. No worries about that. And we've also got Reese Fleury, a good friend of all of ours, wondering, wanting to know if the products are in the catalog. And I happen to have a catalog in hand, and I think you guys do too. I give Reese a catalog already. Oh, good. So he's got one. Plus, Wonderful. I sent him a shirt. He hasn't sent us a picture yet, has he? I haven't seen that. No, we've got to see a picture of him in that shirt. I want to see that. Yeah. He's got and the then, uh, shirt. Just to give you an idea of what's in the catalog, take a look. This is the uh, the Amsoil product line. All of this is uh, spelled out in detail in the catalog. So if you want to get a closer look at all of these items, uh, click the link in the description for a free catalog. Yep. And then I guess the last thing we're going to do in the announcement section here is there's a a vintage snowmobile show coming up Saturday, May 27th in Lowville, New York. Our good friend Josh Leverker is part of that, putting that on. Very much a show worth attending. So if you're in, in that area that time of year, uh, stop by and and, uh, and see that. Now we're on item number three. Um, now my good friend John Spranger Jr. sent some images and video clips from the Snowmobile Museum at St. Germain, Wisconsin. And I've got to give uh, uh, John a shout out. Uh, it was actually him and his brother that were over there. But this is John and I over Christmas. Uh, John is from Wisconsin. I'm from Vermont. Uh, he happened to be visiting Vermont over the holidays. He wasn't too far from me. So we got together and had lunch with him and the missus. And we had a really nice visit. It was very, very fun. Um, so let me uh, find that footage and, and the images that he sent me. I put that all together in a little montage here. It's taken my computer a minute to catch up with me to load that video. 
This is where we need that Jeopardy music to bump, 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 bump. I just hope this browser doesn't crash. Here we go. All right. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> Okay, I'm at the uh, St. Germain Hall of Fame, and we got Stan Hayes' Polaris, 650, and then we got Dwayne Franzen's first world championship skidoo. Jim Burnett. 650TX Jerry Bunkies 440 players Then we got Bobby Donahue's twin tracker Formula 1 he won the world championship in the 88, I believe. Yeah, 1988. Those twin trackers were quite a snowmobile. Then we got Jeff Goodwin's twin tracker here. Scott Montes, he's got a twin tracker. He had a Yamaha motor in it. Jim Appleson's Polaris. Didn't we have the whole bunch of Mercury's from Tripar? Here we got a rustler by Herders and a husky. Yeah, so thank you so much to John Spranger Jr. and his brother James for that awesome footage from the Hall of Fame Snowmobile Museum out in St. Germain, Wisconsin. Gentlemen, anything catch your eye over there? Oh, 
I like the twin trackers. Like they stole the show when they used to show up at the snowmobile races. They'd be yes. 25 of them. They'd go up five at a time in a heat. They'd all run and then they'd do that five times and then they'd put the finals out there. They did quite the show, those twin trackers. Nice. And Bob Donahue, he raced for Amsel for a number of years. I, I we met him a few times at the conventions. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. And how about Butch? Anything catch your eye watching that, Butch? I was just thinking, I, I wouldn't want to have to pick between them. The twin trackers would look nice. I was thinking, wow, I'd like to try a couple of them. Yeah. They must be amazing to ride. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Well, I've In seen fact, them toss people before. Oh, really? A lot of people got to. Oh, Bill New got tossed probably 10 times during his life. Wow. So you're the gonna... best driver and all of them, but it tossed him a few times. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> just just Crazy. as they said, they'd go let go and wipe their hands. The machine would go like this and off the driver go. They'd pitch him right off. Unbelievable. Yeah, I think somebody did a video of just Bill New all the times he, he got tossed. <laughs> wow. Let's see if I can find that for you. The thrills and the spills. Yeah. Now we've got some comments coming in. Let's see. We've got Armin Buto saying the vintage ride is this Saturday at nine at Granite State Arctic CA in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. Sorry for the confusion. Well, cool. Yeah. So anyone in, in the per driving distance from Pittsburgh, New Hampshire this weekend, go on by and check that out. That sounds like a lot of fun. It starts Saturday at 9 a.m. Also, uh, the Racers reunion on August 19th at the Hall of Fame by Tripar Mercury Independent Team. Yes. Cool, and that's, I think that's Jeff uh, telling me that. Cool deal, cool deal. Yeah, that. Uh, in fact, a month or two ago, we did a story on that and on the podcast. That was that was really interesting. Also, the 1975 650 Starfire. That was that first Polaris we looked at. Best looking cylinder head fins ever, for sure. Cool deal. And then David from Alaska Railroad said those sleds look very familiar. And the reason he's saying that is because we're going to be looking at some of his footage a little later from the very same place, uh, just different angles, different sleds. Uh, so that that is definitely a place to to check out. Unfortunately, I have not been able to to get out there and see that. Have, have you, Robin Butch? No, no. 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 We drove past there. Nice, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a box to check if you like vintage snowmobiles and racing and all of that. That's a must-see uh, place to go to for sure. Well, cool. Let me uh, switch gears here. Uh, look at the menu one more time. We're on item number four. Now, regular viewer Reese Flurry from upstate New York sent images from the Great Eastern Whiteout Snowmobile Show. It just happened last month on the 11th. Uh, let me get where I need to be here. We'll cue that up. And, oh, I have it out of order. All right. Uh, I'm going to play this, but there's another video that I forgot to, to put on that menu. I, yeah. Anyway, let's take a look.
Yeah, so thank you so much to our friend Reese Fleury for those cool images. Anything catch your eyes, gentlemen? That was quite a selection of is that cat land there? There was an awful lot of arty cats there. There was a lot of cats, yeah. The second machine, I wasn't sure what it was. There was two of them. One was the orange one or that one. Yeah. yeah I don't Those know. orange chaparrales, maybe? Oh, okay. I don't know what they were. They didn't look familiar. Yeah, because yeah, typically chaparrales have been cherry red. I like it when they have the caboose to go along with them. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. But you're right, though. Typically, we think of chaparrales as being cherry red, and these were orange and kind of darker orange. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a story behind that, but I I don't know the story. And there was but... one picture with all the artichokes and a silver bullet right in the middle. Yes, <laughs> they're they're hard to find those silver bullets. For sure, yeah, and there was some nice snow twisters in there as well. Yes, cool deal. So the next item we're going to look at is not on this menu, and I don't know how I managed to leave it off, but our our good friend and regular viewer Dirk Seams has some footage for us. It's it's a trail ride. Uh, let me pull it up here, and we'll take a look at it. Well, the trail ride lineup has started here. So far, it looks like numbers are way down from last year, but we'll see. Uh, they're doing a little different this year. They have the trail ride and the show all today. Um, so there may be some people that are more concerned about showing than riding, but uh, they still, they still kind of keep coming out of the woodwork. Like you say, it's a, a chilly zero degrees here with a little breeze, so uh, it's a little, uh, little on the cool side. I'm not sure what, what the count's going to be, but like I said, I do see people still coming, so they'll probably wait till the lineup gets a little bigger here. So it's a 2023 ERX. Speedway is where we're at, but it's the Midwest Ride-In is the name of the event. And, uh, so this portion of the event starts on the racetrack, which they have two racetracks here. This is the larger one, and then they have a smaller snow cross track. But it actually starts here on this track, and then uh, they have a trail system through the woods. And halfway around, it's a spot for a bonfire and the whole nine yards. So we'll get a, get a few more uh, videos as the day goes on. But I thought I'd better get one here at the start. That's yeah, building up around the hill here. So we just keep on coming. Feature sled of this year's event is anything with three cylinders or more. So I'm not seeing a lot of those here out on the, on the trail ride. But uh, I did see a group of XLTs a bit ago. The Yamaha Exciter, I have a same phone call like that at home. Uh, one of those times I'll have to bring that. We brought the cold sis here, Karen and I did. And uh, so we got two of the 250 single cylinder Colts. A little more uh, better audio there once that uh, loud Yamaha took off. So, got some John Deere's coming out of the woods over there now. Stop this for now and maybe take one just as, as the pack gets underway and then we'll jump in the uh, follow up the rear maybe. Well, the trail ride's underway and like I say, the Count is down from last year, but it's still uh, still quite a few sleds coming around here. Nice facility here. They got some little windy trails to stay right all on the private property here of the EIX uh, Motor Speedway.
Yeah, so thank you so much to Dirk Seams for that cool footage from the uh, the, uh, the Midwest ride-in in Elk River, Wisconsin. No, Elk River, Minnesota. Uh, pardon me. Uh, anything catch your eye in there, gentlemen? They look like they're having fun. Yes. I see one guy who thought he was falling off. I was going over the bank. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I like Dirk's uh, Polaris. He had those two Colts, and he he's a Polaris collector. He's, it's one of many. He's got... Um, yeah, those are some nice Polaris there. They were in good shape. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, we've got some comments coming in. Uh, Keith Jash says he loves those 78 Ski-Doo's. Cool deal, for sure. Also, our friend David from Alaska Railroad says many awesome sleds there. Thank you so much for sharing. Cool deal. And we're going to be having David's footage here coming up next. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to encourage people, uh, if you're going to any kind of events over the coming months, even if it's the warm weather events, vintage snowmobile shows, grass drags as things get warmer, by all means, please either take some still photos for us or some video, and we'll put it on here for all of us to enjoy. The thing I really like about this is we're seeing images from events all around the country. I'm here in, in Vermont. I go to a lot of Vermont and New Hampshire shows. That's kind of the only places I can physically drive to unless I really want to take a long trip. But by, by having these uh, images and video clips, I can see what's going on in Minnesota, Wisconsin. Um, it's wonderful. Uh, and I'm sure you guys are enjoying that as well, being able to see what's going on in different parts of the country. Uh, so please, if, if you're going to events, please take some footage. All I ask is please hold your camera horizontal like this for a wide shot. It's very difficult for me to work in editing with vertical footage. Uh, so I ask you to please keep it horizontal like that. Um, but yeah. So next up, We've got footage from David at Alaska Railroad. This is also from the uh, the Hall of Fame Snowmobile Museum, St. Germain, Wisconsin. Uh, let me cue that up here. And here it is. Uh, here it is right here. Yep. Yes, uh, David from Alaska Railroad. Thank you so much for those images. What did you guys think of that? Go ahead, Butch. Now that first one, that cat with the, uh, that looked like the big luxury model with the flames on it. Yeah, and that big mouth. Yeah, that caught my eye as well. That was a special yeah. sled. For I, sure. I saw one there with a the caboose with a canvas top on it. That's unusual. Yes. Yeah. There was one I saw I'd never seen or heard of before called the Jack Track. I've seen that, yes. yes. Anybody know anything about that? Sounds like a fox track. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Maybe a, a shoot off from that or something. If anyone viewing this knows, please leave a comment with information about that. I like that red one with the rear engine and the steering wheel in it, where two people can sit in it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, those are cool for sure. And we have comments coming in. We've got Fritz Rupp saying uh, uh, he was at Finger Lakes Snowmobile Club show in Bloomfield, New York, uh, near Rochester, New York. Cool deal. And then uh, Keith Jash says, awesome. Thanks for sharing. Cool deal. Glad you're enjoying that. And uh, someone also says, great video. Uh, this is a place to put on your bucket list. Absolutely. 
that's on mine and i'm sure everyone viewing this would would be say it's safe to put on there yeah now the next video is from spencer delebrier i know he's watching tonight he sent some images from a vintage snowmobile show in north branch minnesota and this just happened a couple of weeks ago on uh, the 4th of march uh, let's pull that up here Yeah, thank you to Spencer Delebrier for that footage. Yeah, a lot of really a lot of custom stuff in that. Did you notice that? Yes, there was. Yeah, that gold side by side was pretty interesting. Yes, for sure. In fact, uh, I'm glad you asked about that because I've got more on that. But I was also admiring that that custom kitty cat with the big mouth front on it. Yeah. But uh, that I think is this the one you were yes, talking about, Butch? Yes. Cool deal. Yeah, that's a, a snow coop. And um, I had a, go ahead. That's an actual production. Was it Snow Coop? Yeah, I think it's a 69. I, I know that there was a 69. I don't know a whole lot about it. But what I do know is that Paul Crane out at Crane Snowmobile Museum in Lancaster, New Hampshire, he has one there at the museum. And I was out there, I think, back in 2018, and I was able to interview him on that that uh, that snowmobile. And he said it's the one of the sleds that gets the most comments of the whole museum because it's so futuristic looking. Um, but I've got some, I've got that interview queued up here. Uh, let's take a look at that snow coop over at Cranes. This here is a snow coop, and it's really quite a, quite a thing. It was real expensive. This is a 1969, the first year they came out. And it has a 372 J-Lo motor in it, or Rockwell, whichever you want to call it. It goes pretty good. It's speckled and everything, but the 
nicest thing about this is every everybody that comes in here, including adults, especially kids, oh, that's a jet mobile. Huh. And I, they all love this one. Everyone reacts to this one. They huh? all, all love it. But believe it or not, in 1958, I had the sporting goods store selling Polaris, Skidoo, and Yamaha, and everything. And I bought a brand new pickup in 68 for $2,700. Three-tone paint, V8 bucket seats. And this in 69 sold for more than the, than the wow. Chevy pickup. That's crazy. Yeah. I'd like to see those prices again today, though. Wouldn't that be nice? I do like that paint. Look at that. I want to get a few shots of the interior on this. Yeah, thank you to Paul Crane for that interview. Was that a right-hand drive? I almost think it was. Yeah. Or it was in the center. It's a three-seater. That's possible, yeah. I didn't get a good look, but I almost think it was. I, I can pull it up again. Let me pull it up. He paid more for that than he did his pickup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, let me uh, forward that ahead to the end here. Including adults. Sell it. Wow. I'd like to see those prices again today, though. Wouldn't that be nice? All right, here we go. I do like that paint. Look at that. I want to get a few shots of the interior on this. So what do you think? Is that center, or I almost think it's right hand drive? Right? Yeah, I think it's only a two-seater, too. Yeah. Yeah, that looks... Uh, a child. Yeah. But even for right-hand drive, it's it's in a little bit toward the interior of the vehicle. Yes. That's quite the, the metal flake paint job, too. But Did yeah. you see the doors ever open on it? Not on that one, no. Um, but let me get that image, that still image, because that thing, it was, uh, it looks like it slides back, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow. And then the hood tilts forward in the front. Yeah. Definitely nothing else like that on the snow. No. <laughs> and I don't know how many years they made that. And we've got some comments coming in too. If if anyone knows anything about this snow coupe, and that's S N O. Wonder if anybody ever took one for a drive. Yeah, for sure. In fact, if anyone knows anything about this, please leave some comments. We've got a flood of comments coming in here. Let's see what uh, what we've got here. Um. Okay, here we go. John Spranger Jr. says, was that a triple engine, a twin engine snow pony? And I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, also, Keith Jash says, lots of wide mouth cats. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Spencer DeLubrier says, those kitty cats were a huge hit. Yes. They still are. Yes, yeah, for sure. Reese Fleury says, the jack track was made in Marshfield, Wisconsin by J.C. Penny. They also made the snow bunny. Good information. Cool deal. Yeah, I love the immediacy of this to be able to put questions out and have people answer and even if uh, you know, just people sharing things that we maybe weren't even thinking. Uh, Keith Jash says rocket sled. Yeah, that, that modern snow coach, snow coach uh, sled. And uh, Reese Fleury says for J.C. Penny. Um, Danny Grumman says looking good. Uh, Rib oh, he's from Rib Lake, Wisconsin. Okay. Now, here's something about the snow coop. Uh, David from Alaska Railroad says it looks as if it was borrow it borrowed the taillights from a 65 Chevy Impala. <laughs> yeah. And Stacy and Art Fosler are wondering what's the shifter in that? Good question. Well, they had reverse. Yeah, good question. And was it a twin track? Someone's asking. Oh, and one one other question. Reese Fleury uh, says uh, the snow coat the snow coop was made on a Polaris chassis. Oh. Cool deal. Okay. So probably a single track because players never made a dual track. Good question. Good point. Yeah. 
And I don't know. Let me go back to that image. I don't know from the angle if we can. No, we can't really tell if that's a twin track or not. It seems like it would be wide enough for oh, a twin yes. track, but but I don't know. Maybe it's just got a single wide track, maybe like a 22 inch or 24 inch track or something. Yep. But we've got more comments coming in. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Reese Fleury is delivering the goods for us. A 30 inch track on that. So a wow, single 30 inch track. track. That's a wide footprint. Yeah. Uh, and then Cade Strackman, Stackman says, not sure where that info came from. I've seen it out there, but Jack Track never sold through JC Penny. Okay. And uh, Reese Fleury is confirming that uh, with a snow coach, it is a, a single track. Yeah. Good information here tonight. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, so much for sharing information. This is. So no one out there has ever driven one? Good question. I know I sure haven't. Reese Fleury or anyone else uh, that are familiar with these, anyone ever driven one of these? How does that handle? How How is that on the powder? With a 30-inch track, does that have good flotation, or is it so wide that it becomes tippy? We'll have to check with your buddy at the museum, see if he's ever taken his out. Yeah, I've got to ask him, yeah, if he's ever driven that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool. Um, oh, I've got one other thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, we've got an announcement from the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Um, but I want to chat for a minute first, and then if there's any, was there anything else that we wanted to discuss about the videos and things we've been looking at tonight? Or no, keep going. Yeah. Okay, cool. We've got one more comment, and then we'll. So, um, Cade Stackman says Snow Coop is on a Polaris Voyager chassis. He believes, uh, and someone else says he's seen two of them in the Mercer, Wisconsin area. Cool. Cool. So what we'll do is I've got a short video clip to play for you. This is uh, from the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. The founder of the Hall of Fame, Midge Rosebrook, and I, our summer project was to make a, a video over the summer. And uh, you'll it'll all be self-explanatory here in the video. So let's take a look at it, and we'll catch up on the other side. So we've got... Mike LaPierre, folks, a guy that helps us out more than just about anybody. Go ahead, Mike. Yes, we've got this time capsule DVD. This was a summer project for Midge and I. We had a, an awful lot of fun making it. Uh, and Midge's cousin was able to come up with some 8mm footage from back in the day. Uh, so Midge and I were talking, well, how can we put this into some kind of a presentation that people would enjoy? So what we did is we came up with... Uh, doing it as a, a talk show format where he and I are talking and we're rolling the footage and anytime there was something or someone that we knew something about, we would freeze the, the frame and talk that person up or talk that situation up, whatever information we had about them, uh, we would talk that up and we went for almost two hours like that yeah. uh, and just freezing the frame. There's a lot of people that we knew uh, that from back in the day to talk up. There was plenty of opportunities to talk people up, situations up. And by the way, this is footage from the Lancaster Grand Prix in 1971 and racing in Malone, New York in 1973. Yeah. So we've got this into almost two hours of, there literally is a time capsule uh, from snowmobile racing back in the heyday in yeah. the early 70s. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of fun making it and I think you'll have a lot of fun viewing it. It's great. I think it's the best one we've done. One of the best we've done. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And what I'm doing to sweeten the deal, so to speak, is if you can place the order, the information's in the description of the, this video, I'm going to sweeten it with some extra DVDs. So this is an extra DVD here. This is three episodes of the Vintage Snowmobile podcast from the 21-22 season. And then to sweeten it further, this is another DVD, uh, three more episodes from the 22-23 season. So there's Three, at least three hours of vintage snowmobile programming on each of these discs, plus two hours on this. So this is what eight hours yeah. of vintage snowmobile programming. And I'm going to sound like the Ginsu guy and say, "But wait, there's but more. Wait, there's more. <laughs> there's more." Yeah. No, we also do a, a muscle car podcast, and we've got three episodes of the muscle car podcast on this DVD uh, from the previous season. There's another three hours, so that's eight plus three. That's eleven hours of programming yeah. nine, nine hours uh, no eight hours of vintage snowmobile programming another three hours of muscle car programming all for fifteen dollars plus five to ship so twenty dollars gets you this care package from these gentlemen you're looking at right here 
Um, and it's a wonderful way to support the Hall yeah, of Fame. It, it helps support this, folks. Yes. It also supports Crane Snowmobile Museum and the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. So if yeah. you enjoy any or all of these things, it's a wonderful way to support us. The funds we generate with this are divided three ways between those those entities, the Hall yeah. of Fame, Crane Snowmobile Museum, and the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. Yeah. Uh, and I hope you will uh, decide to, let me, to pick up one of these. Yeah. Plus the bonus DVDs. It's, what, 11 hours of... Yeah, programming. That'll keep you busy on your DVD player for quite a while. Yeah, you'll you'll wear a rainy day your couch. or cold, <laughs> to, you know, thirty below zero or something like that. Someday you could Absolutely. sit down and watch them, and you uh, can wear a groove in your couch binge watching. Yeah, yeah, all of these yeah. episodes. Yeah, and it'll be worth it. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, thank you, thank you in advance for your support on this. Yeah, yeah. And the address of where to mail a check is in the description, and we thank you so much for your support. Cool. Thank you, Mike. Sure. All right, so sorry about we that. We lost you. Yeah, I thought we did too. That, I had a different version without those those uh, graphics on the end, and I guess I loaded the wrong version. So my apologies. But if anyone is curious about that time capsule DVD, there's a link in the description where you can order that on PayPal and have that delivered out to you with the with the bonus discs that we were talking about. And as we said, it's a great way to support the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame, Cranes Snowmobile Museum, and this very podcast that you're watching. Uh, the, the proceeds are divided three ways between those entities. And, and we thank you so much for supporting that. Great deal. Yeah, for sure. Now we've got some comments that have come in here before we wrap things up. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, we took this comment already about seeing two of those snow coops in the Mercer, Wisconsin area. James Spranger Jr. says, nice show tonight. Regular viewer from Wausau, Wisconsin. He's the brother of John Spranger Jr. I believe they're twins too which is very cool. Uh, also, someone says, uh, wondering if it's the shame, same price shipped to Canada, the DVDs. Yes, they are. So if you're in Canada, don't hesitate uh, to order. Use the link in the description, and we will get that out to you. Uh, yes, uh, David from Alaska Railroad asking if we take PayPal. Yes, if you scroll down in the description, there's a link where you can enter in PayPal. There's instructions on how to do it. Uh, just click away, and, and that'll be on its way out to you. Spencer Delubrier says that 8 millimeter film is really a trip. In fact, yes, I sent him one. Uh, he ordered one a little while back. He says he highly recommends for people to purchase it. And we thank you for that endorsement, Spencer. Very much appreciate it and glad that you enjoyed it. Cool deal. Yeah, Midge and I worked hard on that all last summer. Um, and David from Alaska Railroad says, good show. Well, cool. We're at the top of the hour. Time to wind it down. Any uh, final comments, uh, Robin Butch? Go ahead, Butch. No, I... Great show. I enjoyed that. Thank you for letting me come on. For sure. Yeah. And thanks for coming on. And by all means, consider coming on for some show and tell sometime, either on the Vintage Snowmobile podcast or the Muscle Car podcast, as you have things that are suitable the for car, either. The car we told you about 47 years ago, you started to tear apart and rebuild it. I want him to do clips every week. Yeah, for sure. The ongoing uh, updates. Yeah, See, for sure. Rob and I have a number of car shows to do this year. Yeah. If you're able to get footage from those shows, man, that would be great to share on here. Everyone can enjoy those on the Muscle Car Podcast that we do every Wednesday night. Oh, we've got another comment that's come in. Keith Jash says, thanks for another great show. Also, thanks for your time and dedication. So you're very welcome, and thank you. I'm glad that you're a regular viewer of the show and that you enjoy it. Reese Fleury says, great show, guys. See you next week. Absolutely. Now, next week, we're going to have the NBR racing team on. We were going to have them on last week, and I had something come up that I had to attend to you. My father was in the ER. Thankfully, it wasn't anything serious. In fact, this is a good time for an update on that. Uh, yeah, it was just a urinary tract infection. We were worried that it might be his gallbladder, uh, but it, thankfully, it wasn't serious. He's back home, and everything is all right. Uh, so, And that, that's a segue into another thing. Tune in Sunday night. Uh, yesterday, I was able to interview him. He's 90 years old, and he still remembers all of those times uh, snowmobiling in the 70s. Good night. Uh, in fact, He's saying good night to us right now. But uh, we were able to uh, reminisce about those times snowmobiling in the 70s. 
uh, and we're going to be looking at that Sunday night. We're going to be airing that interview Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're curious about that, tune in, and that'll be there waiting for you. Um, yes, great show. See you next week. Uh, yeah, thank you, Robin Butch, for coming on. Thank you also to all of the viewers for being here every week. We really appreciate it. Uh, and always, we'll give the last word to Amzoel. Good show, Mike. We'll see you next week. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah. Have a good one. Let me find this Amzoel video here. Have a good week, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about Amsoil. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your Amsoil products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what Amsoil is and why you should consider using Amsoil products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. Amsoil is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses Amsoil for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that Amsoil is warrantied for 25,000 miles or one year. The reason we can do that is because Amsoil doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gums, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And Amsoil likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of Amsoil is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, Amsoil says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the Amsoil bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the Amsoil. Amsoil's flash point is 425 degrees, and it pours at 50 below zero. Wow. If you ever tried petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to the honey. And yeah. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out, and once it, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. So Amsoil's an all-season oil, can give you better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running Amsoil than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing. That's amazing. And Amsoil is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, any from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yep, yep. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? Exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather. It runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, what's the benefit of the small engine? Same thing. Makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that Amsoil has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully, this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe joining us in the Amsoil experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen, and uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk talk people through how this preferred customer program works, Amsoil has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer, where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order hundred dollars worth. Amsoil ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a first customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engine, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Amsoil sends you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amsoil. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's take people through the step-by-step -step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website is going to look at look like. These are some screenshots. If you once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on at the upper corner of the page there, you see how I've circled in red. That is the link to click, the Join Now link. That will take you to the Preferred Customer Program page where you can take advantage of all of these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about. This is what that page looks like. In the lower right, you're going to click Join Now. This will pop up. You select the duration you'd like, whether it's six months or 12 months, and click Add to Cart. Now, once this, this uh, pop-up goes away, you'll be back on the main page. And the upper left, you'll see where I've got that red arrow. It says Shop. Now you can start shopping for products, and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over $100. You'll get all of these benefits right away. 
So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There's different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. And you can see the item there and there's choices for different viscosities. But take a look at the price. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in. Uh, but if you've join the preferred customer program first, you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount. That's what we're looking at here. You're saving $3.80 on that quart of oil. Instead of paying $16.29, you're now paying, paying $12.49 for that quart of oil. That is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get. And then uh, you just add the, the, the quantity that you'd like. You select any other items that you're thinking about, add them to the cart. And once you uh, click add to cart for the final time, you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen. It's going to show your items and your, your um, the total that you're at so far <coughs> pardon me and then now uh, you just click view cart in the upper right and that'll take you to your cart uh take a close look here at the upper right that blue box shows that you're getting free shipping you're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over a hundred dollars that little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next six to 12 months and then below that you've got the, the items that have been selected i just for the exercise here i selected nine quarts of this signature series but that brings us up over a hundred dollars for the free shipping we're saving 34 34 dollars and 20 cents and if you're ready to to finish you click check out now and that takes you uh to this screen here if you haven't signed up with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. Now, let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to Amsoil. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike Lapierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-555-94. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for Amsoil under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. And the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your Amsoil Preferred Customer Program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, wkspodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that, that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests, so it stands out as I'm checking my email, and we'll get that right out to you. So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is... Uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yeah, yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amsoil, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amsoil. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amsoil marketing plan. Amsoil has a large selection of products to cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're in the snowmobile, boating, or ATV, and or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business that I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along if you need any help on how to promote or, or to find new accounts. We're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that, uh, that number, this 304-555-94, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing Amsoil for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business, and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with Amsoil. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate Amsoil leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. it like Rob said, it's enorm an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows, car shows, motorcycle shows, snowmobile shows, anything with a motor, you like going to those shows, those events, those races, this is a great way to turn that into a, 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 a income opportunity for you. Yes, yes. And just by wearing my Amsoil hat at one of these events, people come up and ask me about Amsoil. People, people don't know where to buy it, and I'm there to help them, show them where they can buy the products. Perfect, perfect. Well, cool, cool. Well, this is great. Uh, any final thoughts, Rob, before we wrap it up? Amsoil's a fun business. Amsoil's been around since 1968. You know, it was the first 
synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited, as excited as we are about the Amsoil products. We'd love it if you could enjoy, if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the Amsoil products or to join the Amsoil team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have okay. a great day. You have a good day.